it's not good for us to stay there. And why? Because we are taught and we understand God is active in our lives everywhere. Everywhere. On the media. In every conversation. In every conflict and problem. And we know that you and I have to find the inner courage and the wisdom to calm ourselves amidst all of the chaos. Did you hear the word calm? Calm. Hmm. I want to think calmness to me means standing in my heart space and not go into my head to solve it why and why and try to get to an answer. When we are now totally a global society and we will not know the why, all we can know is our personal response. So, William James, you've heard of him, I'm sure. He really helped initiate psychology in America. And he made this quote, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. So, let's see what we got here. Now, I'm saying drop that thought because I want to just keep on going the entire message with our ability to, to let them go. So, there it is again. Now, when I say choose peace, we want to make sure we understand what beingness is. Last time I was here, we got into it. And um, I'm, just to remind you, the choice is always there. It is our soul work. And if you say, I can't find the soul, I don't know about the soul, I can't see it. Think of it this way. It's all that encompasses our thoughts and feelings. It's all that encompasses our thoughts and feelings. It's active in us. An invisible field of inquiry, a sponge absorbing it all, and then we choose. And once we choose, we can choose all the fear we want, all the awfulness we see, or we can go to a place of peace and be in it. That means holding the sadness. That means holding the chaos. And most of us would rather not, to be honest. It's, it's hard to contain those, those feelings, but they will always be here. The choice will always be here. And if you and I want to deepen our spiritual life and not be overwhelmed by what we see, then we can just settle into that place of calmness and breathe. So let's do that together. And it does help us not only oxygenate the body, but it helps us get centered and grounded. This is our world now. This is the what is. And this is God at work in our world. And things are shifting day by day. So I wanted to show you one picture. <clears throat> and that was one. My, my daughter found this for me. Because the confusion on her face says it all, doesn't it? It looks like there's some fun going on with the music on the side. But, mm. Yeah. Suffering. Let's just say it. Now, there is the possibility, though, that when we go to our heart space, the suffering stops. Why do you think that is? Whoops. That's because we feel love, compassion, we want to do some outreach. We want to move. Something in us says, I can discern my part in all of this. I don't have the, the ultimate answers. I'm one person, and I will choose love. 
in whatever may, way it manifests. So when we choose beingness, look at nature. I feel very refreshed when I'm in nature. Richard um, retired recently, and we live out by a tributary, and it's um, on the Pamunkey River. Very serene, very quiet. We have very, we have, we don't have any neighbors <laughs> around us right now. And that when I walk outside, I am looking at leaves. I'm hearing sounds. I'm hearing, I'm seeing butterflies, rabbits, deer, squirrels, a couple of snakes. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, prayerfully doing their work to guard the premises. That's my, that's my take on it. And my, my feeling when I'm in nature is that I can directly go to my heart and feel calmness. So we can choose beingness, and beingness means that we are spirit, soul, and body. We're not cut off from our feelings. We can hold them, we can contain them as chaotic as they can be. So I've got three steps. Here and now, and why not now? Why not? Why not choose these steps? So are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. First step is to drop persistent, habitual thoughts that run like a ticker tape through your head and just let them go. And when you do, you transcend your fears and you're at peace. Do you believe me? Okay. Are you doing some of that? Do I see? Yeah, I saw some hands. Okay, great. So the fear-based thinking being in our talking head that makes no sense. It, 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 it's not even real. The only thing real is God mind, divine mind, that's filled with compassion and love and understanding. That's real. All the rest of this stuff is muckety-muck. And yet, we need to start preventing any of that from entering our minds, because then we're doing self-harm. You understand? It's not coming from outside. If we don't drop the thought, we're creating the thoughts that create the harm. So our job is to drop the thoughts, and we're going to practice some of that meditation time. Now, I had a funny slide. My daughter took it off. She's editing my my PowerPoint, but I had gas masks on Richard and I, and I was going to show it to you because I'm trying to bring humor into my life, knowing that's the change I can make. That's what I can do to lift myself and perhaps lift others. Richard does a great job with humor, and I'm, he's always been the storyteller. I've always been the serious and sincere type, and so I've left it up to him, but by golly, I need some humor to come from me, from my heart space. So this, <clears throat> this is what we're, we're, do, we're learning here, I'm learning and sharing with you, that in my constricted thinking, I limit my good. Why can't I tell stories, and why can't I tell jokes? I might just tell you one shortly. Okay, so um, let me just do it right now. So there was this, there, <laughs> there was this man in a neighborhood wa watching his next door neighbor with a cat, and he was just laughing at her and laughing at her because it looked like the cat was, you know, she was engaged in a conversation. The cat understood. So they had this deep, meaningful relationship. So he goes inside and he says to his dog, she thinks that that's a person. And they laughed and laughed together. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, <laughs> I was hoping Richard would laugh at least, but anyway. So I'm thinking, yes, my first joke in a long time. <laughs> but, <laughs> the second thing, the second step, is that not just humor, but a vision. I'm a visual person. And um, if somebody tells me directions, I say, Let them, wait a minute, I have to write it down. I do, I have to write everything down to order to get my right, left, and north and south, and so on. So a vision board, and one that contains the core values that you love and that you live by, and, and all the ways you want to track new things into your life, brings you peace. It brings you a pathway, a calmness. It brings you suggestions, new life, new excitement, new hope. Like going on a vacation, <laughs> taking that cruise. Maybe there'll be one ship. Maybe there'll be more. Maybe there'll be family that'll come see you. You, you know, you want to be that magnet and you want to hold that vision. And believe it or not, it, it comes out through you, through ideas and suggestions and conversations and eventually you just are going to manifest it so the vision board is one that you want to make sure you have available to you now <clears throat> when we talk about stress when we are making a vision board it's a mindful process it's a contemplative practice process Stress damages the brain. This is the antidote. You understand where I'm going? This is not just a little tiny activity. This is big. Because on the other side, you're going to have what's called the crap board. Now, please forgive me for saying crap. I'm not saying that, that that's what I'm envisioning because crap is an acronym for conflicts, resistances, anxiety, and problems. What do you think of that? Those are all on the crap board. And you know, we got plenty of those to put out. So what we can do is go again into contemplation and mindfully connect with our truth. Yeah, we got stuff. We got crap. And rather than debunking it and making it look all pretty, it's just what it is. And once it's up there on your board, you know that, by golly, maybe I didn't create all of this. Maybe I just participated in it a little bit. But it's there. And so we can then start moving through it and watch it dissolve. Now, the reason now that was that exercise was learned at a unity conference, and I'm sure Revs Patricia and Don were there. Richard and I watched this man demonstrate this process. His name is Mark Waldman, and he works with executives all over the country out of Loyola University, and he he's written a book or a paper, and um, it's all about. Let me see if I can get the exact title. Practical Neuro Wisdom Vaccinate Your Brain Against Global Anxiety. <laughs> okay, I like that too, and you laughed. <laughs> and laughter is the best medicine because it'll, it'll really, really get down and, and, and help us with some, um, increase our dopamine levels and, and our immune systems. Have I sold you yet? Um, laughing, laughing at ourselves. Now, I want to tell you a third tool. And the third tool is really a mindfulness tool to just hold. Because you're going to be thinking about, I can drop that thought. I can look at my vision and I can look at my crap. But what, what can I do inside? Now, Meister Eckhart, anybody heard of this mystic? Mystic philosopher, 14th century Dominican priest. He was German, 
And he made this quote, God is not found in the soul by adding anything, but by a process of subtraction. It's not of addition, it's of subtraction. So let's think about that. Go back to your crap board. The things that perhaps you believe about yourself that aren't real, you just erase it or strike it through. You see, you're taking it away if it's unreal. Uh, a thought you had, a thought someone, a comment someone made that really is not true about you, you're going to take it away. So when we start living and loving in our subtraction, we begin to say, well, I can let that thought go. I don't need to think that thought. I can omit it. I can delete it. I can just release it back to the universe from whence it came. Now, let me give you an example. Any of you see Simone Biles, the gymnast? During the Olympics, she went through that pressure and she had to go through a process of subtraction. She was able, they called her the goat, the greatest of all time. And what pressure she must have felt was tremendous. Needless to say, when she said, no more, I'm done. Just before she went back to that last, last moment and participated. But she decided in her soul strength that it was not good for her mental health. And I'm sure it wasn't good for her physical health if she slipped and hurt herself even greater. So that's a pattern that of standing in our strength, it'll come upon us. And we've got to be able to choose what to let go and what to keep. So this morning, what we want to do is continue to attack any false negative in our heads. You're not going to be good enough. You can't tell stories. You can't tell a joke. Well, I just did. And <laughs> our ability to unplug it from any reality just decreases our stress. You see the subtraction? You come into a place of calmness, simplifying your life, letting go that which is not real, and bringing into alignment any type a fragmented, wounded self that's out there in your life and you're saying, I never was loved by anyone in my family, you're going to strike that out and you're going to say, well, maybe I was loved a little bit at one time, at one birthday party, you can remember that type of action. And you're going to bring yourself back into wholeness. I was a loving child. Too bad they missed out. You understand? We're loving ourselves back into our wholeness. And that is subtraction. That's our ability to let go, to drop those thoughts and come into peace. When we drop those negative thoughts, actually it's our ego that we're dropping. Our personality, those wounded parts of ourselves. Because when we are quiet and silent, either in nature or in a very quiet, serene place inside, you're going to feel God energy. And that energy is going to be pulling you in so much so that you won't want to leave it. That's when you know you have dropped all the outer and you're ready to be. And when you are there, you are living and moving and having your beingness in the consciousness of the Christ. You've transcended it all. So we're going to go in a time of meditation and we're going to practice the thought and as we sing, I think Janice is going to lead us into the music team, okay, into your thoughts or prayers. So we must be careful what we're putting out there and creating.
the higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a join me now in a time of deep, deep relaxation. Connect with your breath. And release. And just feel your whole body softening. your ego surrendering, your emotions calming, and you claim yourself, spirit, soul, and body, to be part of this world and maintain that place of center, that place of love, that place of safety, that place of expansiveness. Now, if you're having any Thoughts other than being peaceful, drop that thought. Breathe and come back to center. Drop in the intrusive thoughts and come home. You are spirit, you are soul, and you are body. And you are free to live and move and have your being in spirit, regardless of any external activity, worry, 
concern, problem. You know how to calm yourself, for you are calmness. And so we learn today to drop any, any thoughts that are chaos or concerning and live freely, live in joy and transcend it all. And so we come back to this time affirming, we know that our thoughts are prayers and we're gonna say this prayer today that we live in oneness in love and in joy. Reverend Vicki, before you take that step down, would you just stay there for one moment? I have learned a lot about visioning boarding. How about you guys? And oh, so much more. And we are so thankful that you were here with us today. And let's just show some love for such a wonderful, wonderful message. She's sharing one more thought about those visioning boards. <laughs> so this is the time in our service when we have an opportunity to give back a portion of all the good that we've received. And as we prepare for our uh, love offering, I would like to welcome anyone that might be here for the very first time. If you're visiting us for the first time and you're in the sanctuary, if you would be so bold as to raise your hand, we'd like to welcome you. Welcome, we're glad you have chosen to be with us this morning. And also, if you are viewing online for the very first time, know that our hearts are open to receive you and we're glad that you decided to join us today. We have Richard, I know, floating around somewhere with that butterfly net, so he's going to be with us in a moment. Richard, would you come up, please? So there are many ways to give at Unity of Charlottesville. We have an online text to give that you can use. We have the uh, US mail that you can use, and uh, I think I said three, online text to give and the US mail. So if you would join us in our affirmation, and as we do prepare for that, just know how grateful we are for you and all that you do, talent, time and treasure here at Unity of Charlottesville. And so together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I'd also like to acknowledge Tara and Jim helping me out today. They're doing a great job with Blair, who's in. Blair's in Colorado visiting her son and daughter-in-law, having a great time. And she got to see Jan and JD, too, I think. And yay, Rhonda. Yay. 
If you want to be happy, keep your mind off your thoughts. Focus on the things you have, not what you haven't got. Thoughts will keep you up at night, they'll drive you to the brink. Thoughts will make you crazy, don't believe all that you think. If you want to be happy, happy. If you want to be happy, be careful what you say. Resist the urge to criticize when things don't go your way. Can make yourself feel better, putting other people down. Remember, words can hurt you when they come back around. If you Happy. Let's be happy. Think about it. If you want to be happy, gotta give up control. Take your hands off the wheel. Let the dice roll. When you give up competition, there can be no power play. Trust the mystery and let the chips fall where they may. If you want, oh, 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 if you want, do you want it? Thank you. Be happy. My goodness, put a guitar in her hand and a microphone in front, and wow, something good is always going to happen. So thank you so much, Rhonda. Appreciate that. Well, we have some announcements to make. I'm going to share those with you in a moment. Uh, this Tuesday, there it is, Course in Miracles from 7 to 8.30 in the Fillmore House. So if you're available and interested, that's the place to be on Tuesday. Now on Wednesdays, we have a midweek faith lift. That is from 6.30 to 7. That is a wonderful opportunity to be with folks, not only upholding them in prayer, but having prayer requests honored for yourself and your loved ones, 6.30 to 7 if you're available. Saturday, August 28th, there's a prayer workshop from 12, pardon me, from 10 to 12. It's going to be via Zoom. Myself and Reverend Ginny Roll will be facilitating that. I hope you're available. It's going to be really talking about prayer for yourself and how to continually uplift yourself in prayer and then how to uplift others in prayer, whether you are praying with them in person or holding them in prayer. So I hope you're available for that. Again, that's Saturday, August 28th. Good news, the bookstore is opening, yay. It is open today. Uh, take some time to go in and check. They've really done some work in there to make it look nice and uh, have it presentable for you. So that's today, it's open. And there's also coming up a Unity Eastern Region Conference. Now, what's wonderful about that is that if you elected to go to that, it's on Zoom, all on Zoom, it, the full cost of it is $257. That's all week. That runs basically Sunday evening all the way, I believe, through Thursday. 
But if there is a, a concern about being able to go to all of those events, you can actually pick and choose those events and just pay for what is really appealing to you. So take a look at that. You go to the Eastern Region website and it has all the information you would need for that. As always, we have pastoral care available. And as you can see right here, there's the Unity office number. You are more than welcome to call that. And as you might remember, Reverend Marge Brown is also um, you know, helping as far as any pastoral care needs go. So we are well covered and in very good hands. And there is virtual fellowship immediately following the service. So if you're on Zoom, you're good, stay right there. If you're on Facebook, there'll be a link in the chat, or as always, you are welcome to go to unitycharlottesville.org and check on, the sun check on the Sunday services tab. And that's one way that you can be involved in that. So we hope to see you there. Now we also have prayer partners available. Buddy will be in the back after service to honor any prayer requests that you might have. And we also have our prayer healing circle, which is a very powerful circle of folks that meet right over in the right-hand corner. Uh, if you're available for that, it will be an uplifting experience for you. I know I have been in that circle. Right now, I'd like to call Kate up so we can do our children's blessing. So thank you, Kate. Thanks, Anne. Well, we had a fabulous day, as always, down in, or over in Kids Church. We've been doing Kids Church in uh, the Fillmore House so we can have the windows and doors open and get the nice fresh air coming through. And we played Uno and Puzzles today. And the spiritual teaching, of course, is you never know what's going to happen. So um, with that same theme, we had a really great week last, um, last Sunday. Me and several other parents and YOU sponsors took six of our teens down to Roanoke to go zip lining in the trees. Had a fabulous adventure facing our fear of the unknown and heights. And, um, and also just a great time to all be together swinging through the trees like monkeys. And then finally, our Uniteens, our middle school group, has been meeting online every other week, and the next Uniteens meeting is next Sunday at 7 o'clock. So Uniteen families, we had a little switcheroo on the weeks, but it's next Sunday. All right, that's what's going on in youth ed. We're having a great time. And let's bless our children, teens, and parents, wherever they are. Here we go. Children, uniteens, YOUers, teachers, and parents, you are loved, special, and important. It is so true, always true. Have a great week. Thank you, Kate. Well, I'd like to take a moment before we do our prayer for protection. First of all, music team, thank you, every single one of you that were here today. Yes, beautiful, flawless. And what about our sound team back there? My goodness, woohoo! Keeping things going for us, appreciate that. Really appreciate all the teams that are just a viable part of Unity of Charlottesville. We thank you all for everything you have committed to and continually do for us week after week after week. And so with that, let us stand for our prayer for protection. And together, let us say, the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and wherever God is, all is well. And now our peace song.
indeed. Go forth and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time.